and welcome back. First of all, a big thank to Paolo Franco for his much appreciated support to this channel. Thank you so much, Paolo. In my video published on October 23rd, I showed the distortion and bandwidth audio analysis made on videos posted on YouTube. You can find the link to the video above and in the description. Honestly said, I didn't imagine that a channel with a few subscribers and a video with a few views would cause so much noise about some simple statements, we see them in a moment. But the socials are unpredictable, and up there, each one behaves as it was his play about concepts learned elsewhere, with which he makes videos for his own channel without being sure to have well understood the purpose and details of the tests and distorting a little or quite enough the original message. Why? Or caused not well understood, or not with the necessary skill to be able not only to remake the analysis, but to understand the causes of divergences, if any? Or just to create clicks, views, monetization, whatsoever? In this regard, there are only two channels that, in my opinion, allow you to filter out what I consider junk from correct information. The one of Dan Worrell and the one of Dave Rat. Sign up and follow them. You'll find the link in the description. Today, we review some important phases described in my video, with particular attention to the bandwidth, to clarify some points. Let's review together the principle with which I made the test video. Pay close attention to what I say and illustrate. With Reaper, I produced a black video, the audio of which is white noise reaching 20 kHz. For each video produced, I re-imported the audio from the video generated by Reaper to verify that it is as desired. I then uploaded the verified video to YouTube and finally I downloaded the video from YouTube using the available command that you see here from the drop-down menu since the player in the browser is responsible for the dynamic limitations at UFS and so on and I didn't want to interfere further in the conducted tests. So, the video to be tested was downloaded through the tool made available in YouTube Studio and available only to the channel owner. In the chapter Bandwidth, by measuring the bandwidth of that video downloaded from YouTube Studio, the resulting bandwidth is highlighted. A blatant cut to 15-16 kHz. A 15 kHz brick wall low pass is clearly visible. In other words, it has the same bandwidth as an FM radio station. Above 15 kHz, there is nothing left. It is the signal I generated to create the video. Audio signal exported into the video and re-imported into a Reaper for verification. It is the audio of the video before uploading it to YouTube. That audio was recorded in WAVE, so in uncompressed format. File, Render, Move, WAVE. And as you have seen, the bandwidth is a full reaching and overtaking 20 kHz. The low pass cut at 15 16 kHz is clearly visible, and for those who can read, I don't think there is any doubt. Checking the properties of the video, I notice the data compression 128 kilobit per second, a 44k1 sample rate. Let's try creating a 128 kilobit per second CBR MP3 file to see what happens to its bandwidth. Thank you. 
Indeed, there is a cut around 15-16 kHz. What about streaming? The answer is always contained in the same video, in the chapter Browse Influence. The test is carried out to see the level of aliasing, but an attentive person, with a true spirit of observation, will have noticed that in the case of streaming, the 20 kHz bandwidth is respected. He will surely have made the comparisons as I show here. From all this, it is clear that the streaming has a different quality, sometimes higher than the video downloaded from YouTube Studio, if the internet bitrate allows it. From a certain point of view, it is anti-intuitive, since, as already mentioned, downloading the video from YouTube Studio is a feature available only to the channel owner. And one is led to assume it is of a high quality, almost like the original, and that is available to give the owner the possibility to download the video as if it were a cloud archive. Well, it's not the case. Many have wondered if using online tools to download video from streaming brings such benefits that the bandwidth is respected. These tools are just crap. Avoid them. They compress a lot, they have severe limitations of themselves and therefore the bandwidth is limited. And not only that, but let's try to see with appropriate programs, let's say so. A download made with a VLC, which however downloads at 1280, 720, One made with 4K downloader, a 1980-1080. Two made with a YTDLP, one web, in the other MP4. We will see why in a moment. For both the audio format is WAVE. Let's analyze with the RX8. Download with VLC is limited to 15-16 kHz, as you can see clearly. With 4K downloader, you have the same situation. Same with a YTDLP. Still with a YTDLP, but in the WAVM format instead. And it respects the 20 kHz spectrum. Are these differences between MP4 and WebM behind it all? No, I'm showing you the MP4 video generated with DaVinci Resolve containing the same white noise audio from the previous video, the original exported to my PC before upload. You can read the data on the screen, you have all the time you need. Let's analyze it now with RX8. The MP4 generated in this way reaches well beyond 20 kHz. It goes up to 24 as I work with 48 kHz sampling rate. The noise generated by Reaper reaches the Nike's channel frequency. So it's not the MP4 compression that creates such limitations. 24 kHz and not 20 kHz? From YouTube, the higher 4 kHz is missing. So what? I think YouTube cuts entirely to 20 kHz. There is no need to let anything else pass through. Unless bats are your main listeners, but <laughs> I doubt YouTube is for them. When streaming, the limitations is given by the available bandwidth. To optimize it, YouTube offers different encodings. Not only lowering the resolution, but also the audio quality. The lower the resolution, the lower the resulting audio quality. VLC downloaded at 1280, 720 and also YTDLP once at 2MP4, while with web, it downloaded in the highest resolution possible for this video, 1920, 1080, with codec VP9, very high. 
In the case of 4K downloader, which downloaded at 9020 1080, is the program that introduced the limitation using another codec, another compression. So, by changing the resolution from the YouTube player, does the audio quality change accordingly? I recorded a YouTube stream for each video quality. 1080p, 720p, 480, 360, 240, 144. Let's listen. If my ears don't deceive me, there doesn't seem to be much difference. The ears are one thing, a measuring tool is another, and that's what is needed. I export the generated files in WAV format and import them into RX8. As expected, the measurements confirm my ears. The bandwidth is 20 kHz, no more than this. So, what lowers the audio quality of streaming is not only the download speed, this is also stated in the YouTube specs, use Google, it's your friend, but the softwares that intercept the stream to record it. The link to download the YTDLP can be found below in the description. Download it, study it well and play it. So, in the end, does YouTube limit the bandwidth to 15 kHz? Yes, on the video downloaded from YouTube Studio. Yes, if the video is not HQ resolution due to internet speed reduction, bitrate. Yes, if the streaming is recorded with software that is not up to keep quality. No, if the video is streamed at a sufficient bitrate. There is nothing else to add. The links to support my Patreon or to pay me a beer are here below in the description. I hope I was clear enough and I hope it was useful to you. That's all. Thanks for watching.